everyone, this is Mindy for My Favorite Things, and today's video, I thought I would revisit an older stamp set. This has been in my stamp collection for a long time, and normally I would only use it for holiday or Christmas cards, but today I'm going to use it for more of an all-occasion card. This is the Beast Friends stamp set. I've always colored them as Yetis, but today I'm going to change up that color combination a little bit. I started by picking out three of the images that I wanted to use on the front of my card and also a sentiment. Once I figured out about where I wanted everything to go, I'm going to stamp these three images onto 80 pound white cardstock using the My Favorite Things black ink. I'm coloring the images today with my Copic markers, starting with an E04, E11, and E01. I'm going to use these same three color combinations for all three of the faces. Now I used that E04, which is my darkest color, and I added it right under that hairline. And then I just went a little bit on the side of the face and then blended out with the remaining colors. I really wanted it to have kind of that highlight in the center of the face for the bottom two. But on this top one, I put the darkest shade under the hairline and then on the left hand side of the face, because to me, when he's looking off to the right, that's where my highlight area is going to be. So the other side is going to be the darker side. Now I've always colored these images as Yetis. So I've used light blues or even light grays, but I thought it would be really fun to completely change that up and give it some brownish tones. So for these, I am using E44, 43, 42, 41, and 40. And I know that is a lot of color, but to me, this is a little bit larger of an image to color, and I really like having that transition. It was easier for me to blend, I should say, uh, to have all of those markers. Now, you could try and skip some. Try an E44, 42, and 40 if you don't have a lot of markers. You could try skipping a couple in between. The, for this first one, I actually didn't have the E43 right away. And I found that it was difficult for me to blend the E44 and 42. So I did come back in and color this image twice, adding in that E43. So it's really about what you're comfortable with, maybe the type of paper that you're using. I personally like using the 80 pound Nina cardstock because I just like how it soaks into the paper. And as I had kind of started explaining earlier, this one on the top, it's facing off to the right. So in my perspective, I'm gonna have the darkest shades on the left hand side and also kind of in front of the arm there. So I did that with that E44 and then blended out with the rest of the colors. I also added a little bit of that E44 to the very top of the hair to kind of make those spiky looks stick out a little bit from its fur. I saved that bottom one for last to color because I knew it was gonna be a little bit more time consuming trying to color around the lights. Now with the lights in mind, definitely you could use that for Christmas, but I'm going to end up doing them in a rainbow color assortment so that it's more of a general uh, look to the card instead of a Christmas feel. This one I'm coloring very similar to the one on the left hand side, adding in some shading under the arms, at the bottom of the belly, and then also adding some lines to make it appear like he has a round belly. So I just added a little bit there on the lines above the legs, and then I'll blend that out. And I love how this just makes him, it gives him some shape. Now, if I really wanted to be thorough with my shadows, I could have taken my darkest marker and added that to one side of the lights so that the lights would be casting a shadow over the body, but that was really tedious and it was just a really small area, so I didn't bother with that. But that is something that you could try if you're really interested in adding all of that depth and shadow areas. So I'm blending everything out with my lightest colors and then I'm gonna go through my markers and just pick out a rainbow assortment. So I did the red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, and I'm going to color in the lights. I tried to count it out to have them evenly spaced, but as I was adding my colors, I got them mixed up or forgot a couple. So as long as I had a rainbow assortment here, I was happy with it. If you wanted to have this be a Halloween card, you could color these lights in Halloween colors, which would be really fun too. Once everything is completely colored in, I'm going to take the coordinating dies, line them up, and run them through my die cut machine. I'm gonna work on a background using my Distress Oxide inks. This is going to be just kind of a really quick and simple background. I started with saltwater taffy, 
Then I came in with shaded lilac. And then I'll flip this and come in with tumbled glass. Now you can see there are some pretty harsh lines here, but I do go back and forth between the colors quite a bit to help smooth out that transition. The oxides are really easy to blend, and especially when your cardstock is still fairly wet from the ink, that does help in blending the two colors together. So just using my blending tool and going back and forth over those areas, and then I'm going to let that dry for just a few moments. I decided I wanted to add a little bit of interest to the background, so I'm going to take my Distress Sprayer, and I'm going to spritz this background with that clean water, and then dab up those water droplets with a paper towel. I'm also going to just spritz some onto my work surface so I can get some bigger splatters in the background. And then I'm going to dry this because before I do any other splattering, I want to get my sentiment on the front of the card. So I place this in my Misty tool. I put my characters where they were going to be so I knew exactly where my sentiment was going to go. And then I'm stamping this in a VersaFine ink because normally I can get it done and perfect in one shot and it's really great for stamping on top of oxides. I had one more set of splattering that I wanted to do so I masked off my sentiment with a post-it note and this is some opaque copic white ink and I added that to my surface along with a couple drops of water. I'm going to mix that together with with my paintbrush which apparently I did not clean so there is a little bit of a kind of brownish tint I guess to it. It still looks pretty white on the background but it can be whiter so I just need to remember to clean my paintbrushes. Now after that background is completely dry I lined the middle one with the lights with some foam squares and then adding tape runner behind the other two. So I have these two on the side. Now I didn't put the middle one down yet. He was just kind of a placeholder. Once I have those positioned, then I can remove the backing of the foam squares and add my uh, character in the center there. My last finishing touch is taking a white gel pen and just adding some highlight areas kind of around the belly, down on the legs, and then on some of the arms. And that will finish off my card project for you today. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Thank you so much for joining me.